What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at some of the most common functions within Excel. These functions that we're gonna take a look at are ones that I use almost every single time I'm in Excel. And so these are gonna be really important for you to know, especially as you start using Excel more. So without wasting any more time, let's jump onto my screen and take a look. So let's get started. And the first one that we're gonna look at is aggregate functions. And I use these almost every single time I'm in Excel. So these are extremely, extremely common to use. These are probably ones out of all the ones that we're gonna look at today that you probably have used the most. And aggregate functions are quite simple. They're gonna take an array, or in this case, a column of numbers, and you're going to be able to perform an aggregation on them. So you're either going to sum them up, you'll take an average of the number, or we can get a count of how many numbers are in here. So really quickly, let's come in here. We're going to say is equal to, and we're going to use our first one. This is the sum. This sum aggregation is going to add all the numbers in a range of cells. So we're going to open the parentheses. We're going to pass through this range of cells right here, and we're gonna hit enter. And so now it's gonna sum up all of these numbers, and that's gonna be 5,220. So we're just adding all of these together with this sum function. Next, what we're gonna do is take an average. Now to write this, we're gonna say is equal to, and we have to spell out average. We're gonna open this parentheses, and we're gonna take all of these values, just like we did before. We're gonna close our parentheses. And what it's doing is it's actually summing up all of these, and then it's dividing it by how many numbers or the count of how many uh, cells are in our range of cells. And so it'd be the same as doing this. We could say is equal to, we could do the sum of all of these numbers, and then we would divide it by the count. And we'll look at count in just a little bit, but we'll do the count of all these numbers. So we'll take this right here, and we're going to hit enter, and you'll notice they're the exact same thing. So it's a fairly simple uh, equation or calculation in order to get the average. So you can either write it out yourself, or you can just use the average function. The next one is probably the simplest out of all of these. It's count. It's going to count the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. So if we come in here, and we say we want to get the count of all of these in this range, we'll get a count of 10. Now, if we come up here and we delete one, you'll notice that because this is now blank, this changes to nine. And so it's only the populated cells that get counted. Let's move on to our next most common Excel functions, and that's gonna be year, month, and day. Whenever I'm working with any type of date data type, I often want to extract data out of it, and this happens all the time. And so I don't just wanna keep it in its current state where it has the day, month and year, I just want to extract out the year, or I want to extract out the month or the day. And that is very common for me to do. And so these are very common functions for people to use. All you have to do to use them is you're going to say equal, then you're going to say year. And it says this is going to return the year of a date, an integer in the range of 1900 to 9999. Now, if you didn't know, and this is just a little extra fact is, Excel can't do things that are before 1900. So uh, let's actually write this real quick. We're gonna choose this one. It extracts that 2024 and we can drag that down and that's gonna work beautifully. And if we copy this and we change this to, uh, let's do 1901, change it just like this. If we drag this down, it's gonna work beautifully. But what happens if we change this to, I don't know, the year uh, 1472? Now you'll notice it's no longer acting like a date where it's on the right side of the cell. It's now acting as a string. So then if we pull this down and we try to get it to work, it's not going to work because it's viewing it as a string. So this is just one of those nuances within Excel. Uh, they don't like historical events in Excel. So, you know, don't do anything historical ever in here. Uh, the next one that we can do is the exact same way we did year, we can do month. And all we have to do is type month, and then this is going to return the month within this date cell. So then we're going to select our date, and it's going to extract the actual month. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five. And if we bring it all the way down, we're only taking out the month that is within this uh, date over here. Next one we can do is the actual date. We're going to say is equal to day. This is going to return the day of the month. And again, we'll pass through our date cell. We'll drag this down. 
and there we go so now we have this all broken up and we can better perform certain aggregations on the year month or day depending on what we're actually wanting to do with the data and again this is done all the time so it's really common uh, to use these specific functions let's head over to formatting now I'm calling this formatting, but it's more like text string manipulation. Uh, there's already formatting within Excel, but let's take a look at some of these. So we have this name right here, and it happens all the time with real data where the data isn't all in the same format. Sometimes things just go wrong and you want to format it all the same. And so it's very common to take data like this and format it all in the same way using one of these uh, string functions. So we have upper, which right here, it's going to convert a text string to all uppercase letters. So again, if we pass this through or, uh, you know, this is a fun one because we can pass through just this one cell or we should be able to pass through this entire array or this uh, cell reference and then it's going to populate all the way down and so we can do the same for lower it's going to be the exact opposite of upper where we're going to take this entire uh, reference cell and it's going to make it all lowercase or we can do proper and i personally love typically either upper or proper. I don't personally use lower that much. I just don't like how it looks. So for a lot of my work, I usually make it upper or proper depending on uh, the actual use case, but I'm gonna type proper in. And this one's unique because it's gonna convert a text string to proper case. The first letter in each word to uppercase and all of the letters to lowercase. And this would kind of be what you would expect for a name column. We'll pass through that whole array. And this just looks uh, really clean, really nice. And I do this one a lot with names or locations or things like that, where I know it should look like this and you know it doesn't have to exactly look like an upper or lower. And so that's just the one that I uh, personally prefer. Now let's come over here to this logical tab. In here, we have some information on student names. So we have our student name, we have math, English, and science, and these are their scores. And what we want to create is some type of logic. Maybe we want to say if they have a certain score within their math, then they're going to pass. And if not, then they're going to fail. Now we could easily come through here and say, okay, this guy, this guy failed, this guy passed, uh, this lady failed, this guy uh, passed. You can do that manually and that's going to take forever. But what you want to do is you want to say there's thousands of these. You just want to create a logic that you can apply to every single row. So we can come in here and we're going to write an if function. This is going to check whether a condition is met and return one value if true and another value if false. And if we open up this parenthesis, you'll see we have a logical test, value if true and value if false. So we're going to say if this is greater than, let's say 60, then our value of true, if that is a true statement, then that means that this is a pass. If it is false, if it's less than 60, that means it's a fail. And then we're just gonna pass this along all the way down. And you can see fail, pass, fail, pass, and fail. Now there's another type of logical functions within Excel, and that's where you combine an aggregate function with an if statement. And for this one, we can do a count if so it's an if function like we just did but within a count aggregation and this is going to count the number of cells within a range that meet the given criteria so we have count if and for our range it's going to be these cells right here now when we hit comma we have to specify our criteria now this is just a little bit different than this over here we can still do greater than 60 but we have to put it within quotes so we have to do quote greater than 60 quote and then we close it and you can see we have two that had greater than 60 aka two that passed and so if we didn't use uh, let's just come up here real quick if we didn't use this it doesn't read it in right and so for all these count if functions you just have to put the criteria in quotes and there's average if there's some if there's all of these uh, different ones so just as a super quick example we could do uh, the average if, and we can do the exact same thing. So we have the range and criteria. So we're going to do, here's our range. Our criteria is if it's greater than 60, and then we're going to close it. So you can see if, of all the people that passed this 88, 
and the 61, the average of all the people who passed was a 74.5. So that's how you can use these logical uh, functions as well as these aggregate logical functions. Both are super common to use, and when I got into my first data analyst job, I saw these almost every single day. Very, very uh, popular. The next one we're gonna look at is these lookups. Now lookups just in general are extremely, extremely popular. And that typically comes from the fact that you have data that's not all in one place. You have data up here and you have data down here. And what you wanna do is you say, okay, this person's in North Carolina and we wanna know how much of a discount this person is gonna get. And so the data is down here. We have North Carolina. We know it's a 10% discount, but there's so many of them. We don't want to go through and manually uh, transfer this 10% and copy it and put it up here. Okay, next one, South Carolina. Let's come down here. This will take forever. In fact, it uh, should be 50%. This will take forever. And so we want to use something called a V lookup. Well, there's a V lookup. And then we'll look at X lookup and I'll kind of explain the difference. But the V lookup, we're going to write like this. We're going to say equal to, we'll say V lookup. It says, looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table. Now remember that because that does come into play with something I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But then it returns a value in the same row from a column you specify. So we're going to do V lookup. Now we have to have our lookup value. What value do we want it to search for? We have right here. Then we want to specify the table array. That's this information right down here. So we want to specify this entire table is what it's calling it. And then we have to specify within this table, what number of the index do we want to be returned? Now that's actually the second. In Excel, this would be one and this is two. So we need to specify the second. And then if you want to go even further, you can do uh, the last option, which is a range lookup, which says it has to be an exact match or an approximate match. Now we want to do an exact match. We don't want it to be approximate. So we're going to close this and we can apply this all the way down. Or can we? Uh, no, we can't because the issue is, is that this is changing. This table array is changing every time we go down. So look, as we go down, let's go down one, you'll notice this went down one. And as we go down to the next one, it went down again. We need to do something called anchoring. And so we need to anchor this and let's hit escape. We need to come up here and we need to anchor this table array because this doesn't change. We want it to change as it goes down this uh, table right here, this data right here, but we don't want this to change. So we need to hit F4. That's gonna be uh, right above my numbers on my keyboard. There's a little F4 button, you click on that, and now it has these little dollar signs. That means it's not going to change. So we're gonna hit enter, and as we drag this down, you'll notice that it populates correctly, and if we go into any of these, it's going to uh, be anchored in there, not changing, and that is really important for using these. Now, VLOOKUP is great. Um, it, it works for what it's good for. And honestly, a lot of you know people you may work with may use VLOOKUP, and so it's good to know how to use it. But I personally haven't been using VLOOKUP ever since XLOOKUP came out, uh, because XLOOKUP is like a just an easier version of VLOOKUP, and it has less issues. And I'll, I'm gonna kind of explain the limiting factor within VLOOKUP in just a second. So we're gonna do XLOOKUP. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna say X, look up now this is going to search a range or an array for a match and return the correspond and return the corresponding item from a second range or array and this one the syntax is much easier we have a, our lookup value just like before we have our lookup array that's this one and we have our return array and that's it that's all we need so we can close this and it's going to give us our discount. Now, again, we need to anchor these in place. Otherwise, uh, we're going to have some errors. We can do this. We'll drag this all the way down. And it looks like this one is being read in as a percentage. This is just a general data type. So they're the exact same thing. They're just uh, formatted differently. If we come in here, we change this to, uh, let's say, percentage. You'll notice it's the same thing. So we can uh, we can do it that way, too. Now the limiting factor on VLOOKUPs is that little piece that you may have noticed a second ago, the leftmost column of a table. You have to be looking for in the leftmost column. So down here, I just reversed this uh, state and discount. That's all I did. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to rewrite the exact same thing. And we're going to try to write this. So we have our lookup value. We have our table array. And then we have our column index num. So it should be just one instead of two. So then we type in a one right here. And we can even do a false as well. To make sure it's an exact match. But when we hit enter, it's not going to work. And that's because it automatically is defaulting to needing to look in that left-hand column for the value that you're passing through. So North Carolina has to be on this left-hand side. You cannot put other values in the left-hand side. And that does matter because when you start working with uh, larger data sets and you know more complex data, the data doesn't always sit perfectly just like this. And so you then have to rework all of your stuff and switch columns around to make it work. And it can just get, you know, a little bit confusing. And so I personally love X lookup. Now there's also one called H lookup. It's essentially the exact same thing for V lookup, except horizontal because V lookup stands for vertical like this. And an H lookup is horizontal like this, but the exact same thing. And so all of these functions in Excel are ones that you're going to see almost every single day. If you're working in Excel, I know that I have used and seen these a million times uh, within Excel over my years of working in it, and they're just crazy common to use. And so I highly recommend learning all of these different types of functions. With that being said, that is the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe. If you haven't already, check out analystbuilder.com. I have a full Excel course on there, as well as a ton of other stuff like SQL, Excel, Pandas, Tableau, and more. Thank you guys for watching. Watching, and I will see you in the next one.